Hey guys, Kev here, and I have two mini OTFs to talk about with you guys. So, you may have seen the videos unboxing both of these separately, and I may or may not have compared them in those videos, but I wanted to do a video dedicated talking about these two knives because, ironically, they came in at the same time, um, and that wasn't planned at all. I just had been asked if I wanted to review this one, and I was asked if I wanted to check out one of their knives from Tecto, and I said, sure, I'll check it out. Hadn't really heard of the brand or anything before, so I just kind of was like, hey, yeah, I'll take a look at the knife, and then we can kind of go from there. And I had reviewed three other knives from TAC Knives. This is actually a TAC Com knife, which, um, as I understand it, is a different brand. It's actually a design team, and they're working with Best Tech, um, on, at least on this. I don't know if that's what they're going to be doing in general, but um, it's very cool. And they are different in many ways, alike in many ways. And um, I wanted to talk about it because I, I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah. Uh, so over here we have the TACCOM slash, I guess, Best Tech Stubby. This is called the Stubby. Uh, I have the website pulled up right now. It comes in a Warren Cliff blade and a bayonet blade. So the website is TACCOM.com. That's T-A-K-C-O-M.com. And you can check out their products. I believe this is the first one they've launched. Um, or at least it's the first branded one according to their instagram feed um you have a clip that is attached on standoffs here it's a little bit of a chunky boy um that's my one gripe with this knife is it's a little chunky but because of that you get a pretty healthy grip on it and i do like that it has a lifetime warranty 30 day returns and they always ship free that's pretty cool it's 190 dollars so 190 bucks on this guy uh, which isn't cheap, you know, for a uh, aluminum OTF. Now the steel is 154 cm, so for 190 bones, almost 200 dollars, you get a 154 cm OTF. Now the fit and finish, the action, all of that is top notch. But I will say you can get uh, U.S. made OTFs in that same ballpark. Not necessarily the same price, but you know, Axial Gear used to be in that price range. You can get the uh, Kershaw Livewire, which is a US-made OTF in 20 CV steel for $230 when it's available. But you get a lot more knife and you get more steel, uh, better steel for uh, 30 bucks more or $40 more. I would tend to pay that to get this one over here over this, but that is me um and again this actually does kind of have a smoother action it has a better action i would say and the live wire is one of my favorite otfs this just fires really well in and out it might be the size because this one kind of feels that way too but it's very well done 154 cm steel it is at 59 to 60 hrc this guy weighs 2.8 ounces you have a blade length of 1.98 inches so it is cali legal you have a 3.4 inch handle little lanyard post back there blade thickness at 0.12 just reading this off the website right now the clip is made of steel and the body is aluminum there's obviously carbon fiber inserts or inlays or whatever you want to call them and that's going to add some cost as well um, but this guy is very cool. Has a nice little sheep's foot blade. They call it a Warren, Warren Cliff, which is clearly incorrect because this has a belly. Uh, this is a sheep's foot or a modified Warney, modified sheep's foot, something like that. Um, it feels really good in the hand. Um, like I said, it's rather thick, but it feels good in the hand. You get a nice grip right here where you can use that blade. And it cuts, you know. Um, I expect most knives over, you know, $30 to have a good edge on them. And uh, this has a very good cutting edge on it, which is nice to see. So, yeah, this guy's pretty cool. I like it quite a bit. 
Um, that's the rundown on this guy. Let's take a look at this one over here. So this is the Tech Toe, T-E-K-T-O, Tech Toe Knives A2 Badger. Um, this is the A2 Badger. This is an aluminum frame, OD green. And then you have what looks to be a reversible clip. Um, this is set up for lefty, thanks to Tech Toe. They actually swapped that over for me before they sent it, which is pretty cool. This one's $140. So you are gonna be coming in 50 bones, $50 less. They have Sezzle on their website. But the trade-off is this one is in D2 steel. So you're getting China D2 on here. Um, it is not listing it as CPM D2, so I'm assuming it's China D2. And it is not sharp at all. Can't even cut the paper uh, with either. I mean, I can kind of get it to get through there, but the edge is dull, folks. So one of the things they list down in the uh, question section is, does your knife come sharpened? And it says yes, but it can go dull. Um, this one, unfortunately not sharp um it would you know it's still gonna open a box and stuff like that but it's not cutting paper i guess is what i should say um but i mean i've run it across my finger and it's not even grabbing me at all so that one i'd be scared to touch um okay 140 dollars. now this is a, a tricky situation here with this one they don't list as far as i can tell they don't list where it's made and um, they kind of skate around it a little bit by saying, um, you know, parts made or assembled or whatever in Maine, I think, is where they're located. I did try to get a solid answer out of the person I talked to on Instagram. And they basically just repeated the same thing. They were like, we get parts from uh, the U.S. and overseas and we put it together here in Maine. Now, you guys all know or you should know. Um, if you don't, I'm telling you is what I'm saying. You, you don't have to know <laughs> already. Um, that automatic knives are not permitted to be fully assembled and shipped from China. So let's say myself with Devo knives, if I wanted to do an automatic knife, we wanted to do an auto or an OTF or a out the side, whatever. We would have to have the parts made over there, shipped to us or somebody else, and then assembled in the United States. And that is how you would make an OTF. And that is what I think they are doing. I think these are basically completely made over in China, and then they're sent here, and maybe they get a spring or two from somewhere in the U.S., and then they put the whole thing together. Um I don't really think they're machining any of this stuff, but I could be totally wrong. Um, I didn't get that vibe. Um, I feel like if that was the case, they would probably be proud of that and be telling me and showing me, right? Um, but that's not what happened. So, um, I, you know, it's cool. You can say whatever you want. They're not going around telling people they're made in the U.S. They're just saying they're designed and assembled in Maine, right? That's what I'm pretty sure what I've seen. Um, so there's nothing like wrong there. They're not lying to anybody. They're just not being, you know, they're just not saying we have everything made in China and put them together here. That is kind of hard to tell people. Um, so I don't want to hit them too hard for that. I, it's hard to have that described, right? Uh, we saw Hoback go through the same thing. And I think, as long as you put somewhere, you know, made from uh, domestic and imported parts assembled here, whatever, you're just, you're telling us what happened and that's fine. Um, so I just wanted to mention it because uh, some people had mentioned it in my comments before or on Instagram or whatever. And I just wanted to, you know, nip it in the bud there. Um, you know, I don't think they're doing anything shady. I just think they're not like blatantly just being uber transparent, which... You know, we obviously love that as a community. I'm a big proponent of it, but it's not something you necessarily have to do. Go around with a sign on your face that says, this is made here, 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 whatever, right? So anyway, um, the action on this one is very good. 
has an absolute ring to it, if you can't tell. And a very good spring. I love the switch. I can get a great feel on that switch when I disengage, especially. I can just grab it from anywhere. I can get my full thumb kind of flattened down on this and drag it down, which is nice. Where most switches, you come here and then you kind of have to like drag your thumb like this. You can't, yeah, it's kind of awkward. Where this is like, boom, just it's a shelf right there for your thumb. It's really nice. So they're both very good action, I'll be honest. Um, I love them both. I think the um, Tacom has a little bit of a more premium feel to it. It's a little easier to go out and in multiple times like this. I wouldn't be able to do that with this very well. Ah, yeah, see, I start getting jabbed by that corner there because it's kind of meant to go out, use it, close it, right? And it works very well for that. Right? As you can tell, I'm addicted. Both are really good at that. Um, I do think you get a little bit more premium look and feel and everything with the TACCOM over here. Um, I think all things being equal... I, what I should say is I think all things are equal here. I think both are made in China, essentially, and assembled here. So I don't think you're getting, like, more, you know, USA over here than you are over here, right? Um, but you're getting a price point that's $50 less. You're getting something thinner in the hand, if that matters to you. You're getting something with a reversible clip, which is kind of nice. Um, this one has a glass breaker on the back. Um, this one does not. I personally hate glass breakers, but I think the way they did it was tasteful. No issues. I love this little bit of ribbing right here. It's comfortable in the hand. Again, very smooth and fun to fire. No problems there. And, uh, same thing here. This one's very comfortable. Uh, I will say that where I think this one feels a little more premium and everything, and I absolutely prefer the blade shape on this one um, if this was sharp it'd be a little closer um, but i still prefer a sheep's foot over a tanto the one benefit to a tanto is you can use that bottom tip to get into a box or something like that um, if it's you know sharp where this you can just get in there right there with that tip and you're good to go so i always prefer a sheep's foot uh, again you can get a nice drag with the index finger on this just yeah it's really good but this one's chunky so you get a little thinner. Um, I think they're about the same weight. Uh, what weight do we have on the Badger here? 2.18 ounces, and this was 2.8. So, I mean, that's very close to tell, but I guess it feels a little bit lighter over here. That's probably just the thickness, right? Um, what else? What else? Uh, not much else to really talk about, honestly. They're... They're both solid. Um, you know, where would my money go? Well, after handling them both, um, you know what I'd love? I'd love to see this blade sharpened like this in this handle that is uh, a little more comfortable for me because it's thinner, you know? Um, and I think overall, I do prefer the action on this one a little bit more. Just a little bit smoother, a little bit easier on the thumb. This one has a real snap to it, though, so I'm not going to complain about it. Both are phenomenal. I just would probably take this action. Um, so if you took this blade, if, honestly, you could keep this the same and just make it thinner <laughs> and then put it on this body. Uh, it makes no sense. I can't do all that, so I don't know what I'm talking about. But um, both are good. I think um, the fact that this blade is not sharp kind of kills it for me, though. Personally, uh, they sent this they sent this to me to review. They knew I was getting this knife and they didn't make sure it was sharp. Um, that's a little unfortunate, right? Um, these guys knew I was getting this knife and well, they have a sharp edge on it. We all know Best Tech puts really sharp edges on and maybe, hey, maybe that's one of the things they do in-house. Maybe they sharpen the blade, and they just didn't do a good job on this one. 
that's kind of a known thing with U.S. companies is they struggle with, uh, you know, grinds and sharpening knives. So that could be a thing. Uh, but overall, cool knife. I'm sure if you got one and it wasn't sharp, you could reach out to Tecto, and I'm sure they would probably take care of it for you. I can't speak to that because I haven't worked with their customer service or anything. I'm just basing this off of what I've received, uh, which is essentially a dull knife. So, um, yeah, that's the Tecto A2 Badger and the TACCOM The Stubby. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say, since this is kind of a battle video, I'm going to go ahead and say the win goes to the stubby. They, uh, provided a more fully functional knife, I would say, because, you know, that blade is essentially the point of a knife and it should be sharp, you know? Uh, so the win goes to the stubby, but... I do really prefer the Ergos, uh, the thickness on this one, and absolutely love the action on it. And I think they definitely have something here. Um, they just need to sharpen these and maybe put a sheep's foot blade on here, do some different blade shapes would be cool. But this works as is. Um, you know, it would just need to be uh, sharp. So there you go. That's it, guys. I'll link both of these down below if you're interested. And I uh, love you guys. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic day. Thank you to um, TACCOM, Best Tech, and thank you to TECTO. Appreciate you guys. Uh, love you all. Have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.